Hello, we're here for another chat with another adoptee. Today we have Catherine Samford coming from New Hampshire. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank you Good for morning. having me. It was very exciting. Aww. Happy to have you. So happy to have you. So, so you tell, wanna, tell yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll dive right in, tell you my yeah. story. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um I was adopted in Florida in the early 70s. Um always knew I was adopted, at least that's my earliest memory. And I'm not sure if it's an actual memory or one I just created to, you know, give myself my own story. Um and I have an older brother who was also adopted and a younger brother who's my parents' biological surprise child um, and grew up in a relatively typical family. Uh, my older brother and I were the only ones who were adopted in our family. And um, were you in Florida? Yeah, I grew up in Florida and my, I still have family. That lived down there. What part of Florida were you in? The Tampa Bay area. Okay. Yeah. Um, my older so, brother. Not to interrupt. So I'm guessing your parents um didn't think they could have children, so they adopted, and then the surprise. So it's just a fertility situation. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. And so I was, I think, seven months old, and my parents got pregnant. Um, oh. my brother and I are my younger brother and I are pretty close in age. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> that's happened to that happened to my parents uh mm -hmm. adopted brother was five months old and my mom got pregnant with twins oh wow that's a lot <laughs> a lot of kids all at once yeah. um let's see uh so my older brother came with a story and um even though he didn't have birth relatives names he uh knew more information about them. And I did not come with a story. I really had no information. So what I say about myself is I was born when I was nine days old because I have no idea what happened before that time. Um, basically, I think my parents were told that uh, I, my birth mother was a single teenager. And that's the only thing that I had to latch on to in my youth. Um, I seem to always surround myself with someone who was adopted. So, or adopt, you know, I had adopted friends and that seemed to be comforting to me. Um, but I really, and I was obsessed about my story. I would ask my parents all the time and they would say, we have, you know, nothing to tell you. We don't have any information that always bothered me. Um, the not knowing, um, so I was obsessed with learning where I came from, but had no idea even where to begin. Um, were your, were your parents open about you asking? I, my dad was very supportive. I think my mom had those typical feelings of why, mm -hmm. you know, I must not be doing my job well enough if she's asking me, you know, about her birth mother or her, you know, birth parents. So, mm -hmm. um, she was not always kind of, willing to talk about anything. And I really never was encouraged to talk about being adopted um, and having my older brother to kind of, not that we had these extensive conversations about being adopted, but just knowing that he was adopted and we shared this experience together helped me, I think, cope as a child. Um, uh, so it wasn't until my mid twenties, that I actively started searching and I'm and were you close to your adoptive parents growing up? Like, did you feel bonded or attached? Well, certainly attached, but I, I did. I, um, my dad told me this story only recently that I had this like need to be held all the time. And I see it in photographs. I'm like in people's laps and not just anybody, but like my close family members <laughs> and my grandparents and that he, like, I wanted to be carried by him well past the age that any child should probably be carried. <laughs> and um, so he was, he, he was, I was very close with him. Um, I was, my mom was very nurturing. I was close to her until 
I had my own voice and, she, you know, she was, <laughs> she just liked to be in control. And when she lost that control, it's, you know, we, we weren't really close past probably my teenage years, but um, close as a family as families go, I suppose. Um, Are they both still alive? Uh, my dad is still alive. My mother passed away in 2016. Mm -hmm. so. And, and does he know that you, um, I know you write, you're a writer. Does he know I, yeah. that, does he know that you, um, you know, that you're getting into all of this? He, yeah, he is very supportive. Um, read the book, cried, um, book is dedicated to both my dad. So, um, and his kind of comment to me is like, I had no idea. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like he felt really bad that, you know, I had all of these feelings inside that, you know, he didn't make more of an effort to try and get me some help. But I think at that time, parents where it was, you know, as you know, it's like, just love them and they'll be great. You know, right. the past makes no difference. And um, blank slates, they're blank slates. Right, right. So you know, they were kind of sold that bill of goods. So I can't blame them for that, but I do appreciate his support in this journey. Yeah. Um, so. so you're in your twenties, your mid twenties and where are you? You still in Florida? Have you uh, I went off? Yeah. I went off to college, was in grad school in Colorado and, uh, went to Massachusetts for a summer program. And it was there that I found a lump in my breast and had friends who worked in the health system there. So got me an appointment at a hospital in Boston. And um, the surgeon that I was hooked up with was great at her job, except for the bedside manner. And it really kind of, you know, questioned me about why I didn't know my past and my medical history and was kind oh of gosh. angry. I remember leaving there being, oh gosh, she was, why is she so angry at me? Um, uh, but I was adopted. I mean, <laughs> what, what can I say? Yeah, it's so... But I remember that being the pivotal moment of like giving me kind of the okay to search. Um, so that's where I really started my search. And I had no idea uh, at that time. I mean, this is the um, mid nineties, there wasn't a lot of information out there. I mean, you actually had to go to a physical library. And um, so I just started reading what I could. And I asked my dad um, more about how I could get information. And he gave me the name and the contact information of the adoption agency that I was adopted through. So I reached out to them and was told that first that, um, you know, it's illegal for us to give you any information, yeah. but we can give you this non-identifying information. Um, you will have to pay for that. So I did, and I got that. And it's, I feel like I hit a gold mine. It was two and a half pages of information, mostly about my birth mother. And I was like, wow, this, there's so much information here. Um, I'm bound to find her. And it's the first time I realized that I was not from Florida. My birth mother was from Boston, ironically. Oh. That's kind of where my <laughs> initial search desire began. And that's actually where I began. Um, so she was uh, from a large Catholic family. Um, she was 18. So that was another surprise. At that time, she had already graduated. I didn't know based on the timing, whether she was a senior in high school or she had already graduated, but it turns out she had already graduated high school and her uh, parents were not on board with her being a single parent, even though she, at that time, what I found out was she was, had a full-time job and was already, you know, a high school graduate. So she was flown to Florida to spend um, most of her pregnancy with family friends. And that's how I ended up in Florida. And it, it's interesting. You were drawn back to Boston. That's so many, so many people are drawn back to their, their roots. Naturally. Yeah, it's, it yep. is, it's, in, it's incredible because it, mm -hmm. Boston was 
like it still is my favorite city, not knowing why, but I will, I've always been really interested in history and historic buildings. And um, so I dated somebody from that area. So I had spent some time there and really fell in love with it before I realized, oh, that's actually where I'm from. So yeah, that was. That Did was she, was she um with her, the, your father, your birth father as a boyfriend or was what happened with him? I don't really. So in my, um, in my paperwork, the birth father was, his name was Francis. He was from um, a different county. They didn't, in my non-adopt, non-identifying information, they didn't list the city. I guess that was probably to, you know, kind of not make it easy <laughs> for the adoptee to find the, right. the birth parents. Um, so he was from a different county. Um, it, it stated in my paperwork that they had dated for a short period of time when she found out she was pregnant and he basically kind of cut her off and they parted ways at that point. So she was on her own. Um, it also mentioned in my paperwork that there was some discussion of marriage about the two of them getting married. Um, but in the end, they decided that wouldn't be a good idea. So this is like the information that I've had basically her background that she had, uh, she was the oldest of five and she, um, uh, her like information, brief information about her parents, um, but not much about the birth father. So, um, I then searched steadily for 20 years, um, mm -hmm with and hired to like agencies to help me search that's a long time it's a very long time <laughs> and I was like I'm so I was so obsessive about it too and you know I just I, I thankfully I've had a very good support system throughout the whole thing and at one point my best friend and I drove to Boston at the time I was living in Philadelphia um drove to Boston to do a search where we would you know, I had this whole idea in my head about where my birth mother was from because it said her father was retired military. So I found like a military base. I was like, oh, they must live around here. Let's go to the libraries and look at yearbooks. And, you know, there'll be a picture of my birth mother and it'll be so obvious that, that we're connected that that's how I'm going to find her, which this seems so ridiculous now. <laughs> <laughs> um I mean, I, with, like when you don't know, you'll grasp at anything to. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did a lot of my search ebbed and flowed over 20 years, but um, I really it didn't come to much. And then I thought, and this was only recently, I'd, I'd say probably about seven years ago, I was like, oh my gosh, I found, I think I found Francis and he works at a large university and what the hell I have nothing to lose I'm just going to reach out to him had so, you not done at that so 20 years but 20 years later did you do DNA yeah you I was did, wondering you hadn't I done fine, yeah I finally signed up for um 23 and me in 2013 and from what I understand um they had the largest database at that time and so I I was on there but nothing uh no close relatives or even two second cousins that could help me kind of nothing go back up the tree and come back down. There was really nothing there at that time. Um, so I did. I want to, I want to hear your story. It makes me sad. The, um, you know, just the longing from yeah. childhood and 20 years. It's that's a, you know, I was talking to a friend about adoptees and then like, it's a, it's a longing, you know, yeah, Always. And I think it's, you know, I think people, and I catch myself doing it too. It's like, oh my gosh, you look so much like blah, blah, blah. And I could, I never had that piece. You know, I, I looked, I look nothing like anybody in my family, but my parent, I call my parents like Barbie and Ken. <laughs> but that is not me. <laughs> so yeah, I'm the only one in my family with, you know, I have hazel eyes, but everyone else has like blue eyes, blonde hair. Um, and, you know, I, I, I blended it. I blended in well enough. We're all white. We're all Caucasian, but, um, I think that's what really drove me. I'm so specific. I look a certain way. I act a certain way and I'm nothing like anyone in my family, but the they love same. me nonetheless. So I like, <laughs> I appreciate them for supporting me and my, 
you know, life's adventures and everything. But yeah, I think that's what drove my search is that, you know, that search for, you know, who am I? Mm -hmm. and where did I come from? And I think that's what drives a lot of adoptees. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. So you, you are, you think Francis works at a university? Yes. And I sent him, like, <laughs> I sent him, uh, an email well actually a friend of a friend of mine did it for me because I was too scared to actually let this person know who I was without knowing who he how did was. you figure out yeah how did you figure this out it was so it was a, a picture that I found of somebody in the area that I thought I was from and it the can I had this whole I did like so my background is research I'm an engineer and I've done a lot of research and so I had this whole research paper constructed on how these people could possibly be connected and the ages worked out and you know if you tweaked a little facts here and there it was all perfect and so my friend sent an email to this poor guy Francis to his work, <laughs> his work you know? <laughs> I mean it just like shows the desperation of <laughs> me just wanting to know but nothing came of that and it wasn't I, the right Francis no <laughs> and, did, did he did he handle it well or <laughs> he never responded so I, so I I don't even yeah I don't even know what you know, he was what, probably like, oh my God, what was I doing during that time? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so It was around that time that um, I realized that Ancestry now had a large database. And so I signed up for um, their DNA test. And this was in 2017 now, um, still nothing on 23andMe. And on Ancestry, I got a direct hit to a close relative. So um, I reached out, thankfully, well, two people, one was a cousin and one was a listed as a close relative. So I wasn't sure. So it had to have been like an aunt or something was what, what I was thinking at that time. And so I reached out to both of those through Ancestry and thankfully both of them knew who I was and were very willing to help me get connected. So they, they knew the story. Yes, um, they did. And they uh, were able to connect me with my birth mother. So I um, met her um, in June of 2017 and how um, did she how did she handle that was she and like where was she yeah <laughs> she was at that time she was in North Carolina um and they actually she um spent most of her time in Massachusetts they moved around a little bit but um ended up in North Carolina and now her and her husband live full-time in Florida um but she, uh she got married to her husband, uh, gosh, probably only, um, I think she, she, she had me in August and she met her husband in February that got, they got married that next November and they've been together ever since. And he always knew about me. Hmm. Um, which and did I, they have kids? They did. They have three kids of which none of them were told that I existed. Ah. So, yeah. um, some people in the family knew about me, um, but I was the big secret. So most people did not know I existed. Um, but it, you know, overall, it's it was a pretty good reunion. I think I read all of the the things, all of the books, all of the things you shouldn't do. But I dove right in, and I did all of those things anyways because I couldn't help myself. So yeah. Um, we had a pretty intense relationship for a while. And then I quickly realized that um, we didn't have much in common, which was, which was fine, except she wanted to kind of dictate what our relationship was going to be like. And I just felt like I wasn't in it. Um, for me, I wasn't looking necessarily for family. I was looking for answers. And um, so I do consider her I you know I consider her a mom I call her Catherine 
um, we actually share the same first name, which was um, what a bizarre coincidence. Yeah, completely coincidental. Did um, she? Um, so when you said she wanted to dictate the relationship, what it, what is that like? She wanted a closer relationship, or I think um, she wanted her to be the center of my world, and that was just never going to happen. Um, kind of, you know, I, I kind of got close with the, the person that ended up connecting us was her sister. And, um, I see more of myself and her sister and, you know, I have more of a relationship with her and there was jealousy behind that. Um, mm -hmm. and she was also at that time estranged from her kids, which should have been a big red flag for me um and she wasn't going to tell her kids about me I kind of used it as like a I don't know um yeah it just like a, the whole thing just didn't feel good and then she ended up telling um her two youngest kids about me and I do actually have a relationship with my sister um which is nice I you know um would never had a sister I grew up with two brothers so um and our relationship has been slow to grow organically and I think we have a healthier relationship because of that today so what about, what about the old, other two yeah um the whole family is estranged from the oldest son um mm -hmm. I think he struggles with mental Ill illness I'm not mm -hmm. sure of the specifics and then um the younger son is uh, really has not expressed much of an interest in having a relationship with me, um, which, you know, it's hard for not, not to hurt, but, you know, I, I can't force myself on people. Either they want a relationship with me or not. And for those who want a relationship with me, great. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how I've approached this. I've had a lot of, a lot of time to think about it, I think. So yeah. <laughs> I think it helped me re be more prepared for that um, what about what about her, what did she tell you about your birth father nothing which was a big issue um I remember meeting her for the first time and I talk about this in the book because it was just a you know I just felt that was like kind of ironic that she was so interested in family genealogy and but yeah she didn't want to tell me anything about the other half of me and um, she, she'd done a lot of research on, and like one of the first things, rather than, you know, I flew down to North Carolina to meet her for the first time. And um, the first thing she gave me was a book about family history, but like family trees and, and things, but no photos. Um, and that I could qualify to be part of daughter of the American revolution. I think it is. <laughs> Like, yes, I, I qualify for that. Yeah. Too. <laughs> so she was super into that, but no photos or no, let me tell you about your father's side. Right. So I asked her and she just said, I'm not going to tell you. Oh. Um, so that happens it, a lot. That happens, seems to happen a lot that we hear. Yeah. So for someone to be so fascinated with genealogy, I just thought that that, that really stuck with me. Um, and probably that's what set our relationship off on the, you know, a different path of what could have been versus what actually happened. Um, so she did, uh, let's see, we were, we finally met in like July of 2017. And then that November, I got a connection on 23andMe and I knew it wasn't from my birth mother's side. Um, this is before they parsed out, you know, birth mother mm -hmm. versus birth father side on those services. And um, so I confronted her about it. I was like, uh, I've been connected with somebody on my birth father side of the family. It would be great if you could tell me more information. And then she finally blurted out Francis's name with no other information about it. Um, his name was Francis. That's what she said. Yeah. Okay. And then um, 
I reached out to the woman that I was connected to on 23andMe and um, she had no idea who I was, but she was very interested in genealogy and um, was so willing to help me, which I was very appreciative of. Um, but she has done all of the research on her family and there is no Francis that shows up anywhere on her trees. And um, so we were kind of at a loss of, you know, was I connected to her through her mother's side or through her father's side? Um, and finally, I just sent her a photo of me. So just in case this helps. And she's like, immediately she got, I emailed it to her and she's like, emailed me back almost immediately. She's like, oh my, you look so much like my uncle Bob's family. And um, so we, based on that information and how much I look like her uncle's side of the family, she figured out who I could possibly be connected to. So I wrote a letter to this guy, Ronnie, his name is Ronnie and not Francis, <laughs> not Francis. <laughs> and uh, so sorry, Francis in Boston area. Um, <laughs> You're off and, the hook. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wrote him a letter and um, she brought the letter over to him in person and he was just floored and like was so excited. Now, were you all living in the same area? You were in Philly at this point? Still? I was in Philadelphia and this, uh, what, what it ended up being, uh, I guess it would be my, so it's my birth father's cousin who I reached out to. Um, they're all in New Hampshire. So she went over and gave him the letter. And I, of course, put pictures in it. And he immediately looked at the pictures and there was like no denying <laughs> who I was. And um, and you mentioned your birth mother and her name. and I did. And he okay. was very, he had no idea. Um, that she'd been it, pregnant. Yeah. And as it turns out, he thought I was... And I go more into the story in my book, but he thought I was another child. He was um, dating somebody around that time. He was already graduated. Um, he had already graduated from high school and she was a senior and she was pregnant. And then there was discussion about what was going to happen. And he had no say in the matter. Um, apparently he really cared for her and cared about what was going to happen to the baby. And she was what he was told. He thought she went to Florida to have the baby. Oh, that's cool. So, this is an entirely different woman that yes. he also impregnated <laughs> at the same time yes. in the same yes. year. <laughs> this is somewhat like my birth father. <laughs> Yes, apparently he got around. So, yeah. Um, but he, so he <laughs> was insistent that I was this child. No kidding, because that's so coincidental. Right. I mean, it's like, bizarre. Yeah. So, and I like in my letter, I said who my birth mother was and, um, you know, kind of like little information that I had about the story, basically from my um, non identifying information but um he didn't believe he didn't believe it easily he had no idea so the first time we talked on the phone we just kind of talked about you know what we looked like and everything and um he didn't really remember the story until the next time we spoke and then he was very open about everything but he remembered at that time that um but basically I'm like a one night stand conceived in the back of his Volvo, um, yeah. which is probably why I have this affinity towards Scandinavian cars. I don't <laughs> <laughs> So we have a, like, um, we finally met and it's like looking in a mirror. I mean, we are so much alike, not just in the way we look, but our mannerisms, our sense of humor, what we've done with our lives, what we enjoy doing. So he has um, really become a best friend to me. Mm. And part of the reasons why we, well, thanks to COVID and 
being able to work from home, we were able to relocate to New Hampshire, which is interestingly, it's like Florida will always be my home, but you know, I feel at home for the first time in New yeah. Hampshire. It's just, you know, I was never, you know, I feel funny complaining about growing up on the beaches of Florida. It was an idyllic childhood, but I'm, you know, I never liked the beach. You know, yeah. I always loved the mountains. And so it's, it feels like coming home. So it's, you know, we have a really nice relationship. And I have a question. Has he gone on, like you have a half sister or brother mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I have a biological father with the same sort of situation. Have you, has he gone on the DNA sites or like, is he wondering now about that child? Yeah. So he, um, I got him to take, that was part of establishing paternity between the two of us. I was going to oh, ask that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he took a 23 and me test, but he, we also did a s traditional paternity test as well. Um, so he is on there and I kind of, mon he's not a computer person. So I, he's on part of my profile. So I have not connected with anybody, but um, you know, I guess that's always a possibility. My, did you try it on Ancestry? No, I'm on Ancestry, but he's not. And, and oh, and so you haven't connected with anybody else that could be. No, and I've, sibling. I've dug in a little bit more to that story. And I believe that uh, that relationship, um, she went on to have an abortion, but he oh. was never told. That, oh, it was, so. it was post row. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, I think uh, it was pre, but abortions were legal in New York. I think that was the place to go at that mm. time. Yeah. So it was still accessible, but. And did he have any more kids? He did. He had two boys. Um, you have a lot of brothers in your I life. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that I'm involved in their lives. We're not particularly close, but, um, you know, it's, I think, that's the unfortunate thing of meeting so late in life and that you really, you know, I say like genetics create people, but histories build families. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, we lost a lot of that time together, um, but we get together for, you know, events and things and it's, you know, it's nice. Do um, they live close by? They do. Yeah. So, and are um, they, and they're a lot younger, I'm assuming. Not a lot younger, but yeah, his oldest son is four and a half years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And we look a lot alike too. He looks exactly like his dad. So put the three of us together and you would think that we had grown up together. Um, and the younger son is only, I'd say, I, I, I think like six years younger than me. So, um, that, those aren't huge differences. No, um, no. So where are you at with Catherine now? And yeah. does, did, how did she react to you finding Ronnie and all of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she wasn't, she, it, she's still not open to talking about it. Um, so I just avoid the subject. She, um, does she feel, maybe she feels ashamed shame. and embarrassed about a conception in the back of a Volvo. Probably, I would say, yeah. Might have been okay if it was an American-made car. No, just kidding. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the sad thing is, is both of my birth parents started to show signs of dementia in their early 60s, mm. and they're now both in their late 60s, mm -hmm. and she has progressed pretty quickly. So when I, I, and I wouldn't have picked up on the signs when I met them because, you know, I just took their enthusiasm and repetitive stories as us getting to know each other um so she doesn't uh, I've you know kind of you know disconnected from her for a little bit and then I've only recently reconnected with her because I just don't want to have any regrets in my life um but she doesn't really she's a kind of a loud outgoing boisterous person but she's lost all of that she doesn't talk mm. anymore um mm. which is quite sad, sad. yeah but dementia is a horrible thing yeah I'm glad that she got to meet me she still remembers me um which is great and so my birth father is struggling as well he's probably in the mid stages um and I think he remembers me only because I'm here and I 
can see him very frequently. Um, I don't think if I had that, that he would be able to remember me for much longer, which really breaks my heart. So oh, yeah, so sad. It's, yeah. Uh, also scary. Yeah. I was going to say it's very scary. So when I dug in, I think in the research of writing this book, um, what I found out was um, that the laws that prevented me from finding my birth parents weren't actually on the books when I was born or when my adoption was finalized. And that was a really um, sobering fact to uncover. And that when, you know, when adoptees, and I, this is true in Florida, and I'm not an attorney, um, but I'm sure it's true in other closed states as well, where they're presenting you with the law on the books at the time. So when I was born and my adoption was finalized, adoptees still had access to their birth certificate. Mm -hmm. um, there was no confidentiality of um, parties, but there were confidentiality of records. And so when I reached out to the adoption agency and for the first time in the late, in, I think it was 1996 or 97, she presented me with the law at the time, um, but with no other options, you get this non-identifying information, but nothing else. Yeah. But even in the law at that time, it said that um, birth parents should be made aware of the existence of registries, which didn't exist back in the 70s. Um, and I believe that there was an intermediary service at that time that could help you locate, which I wasn't informed of. So that's very frustrating. And they still do that today. Yeah. Once I got connected with my birth family, I pet petitioned the court to have my records un um, unsealed because I just it's my information and I wanted it. And I still had to go through the legal process and have my birth parents and my adoptive parents write letters on my behalf, giving me permission to oh my God. the records, which That's is ridiculous. It, it drives me crazy. We are forever like, infantilized. Yeah. 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 Like so I'm an adult here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't basically because Francis was uh, and I don't, I didn't have access to my birth certificate, so I didn't know if his name was on the birth certificate, but because Francis was mentioned as my birth father, the court was basically asking this Francis Ugh. to write a letter on my behalf to have my records unsealed. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write this Francis a letter because at this time I knew who the Francis was and try and get oh, the So story. she too was confused. She thought it was a different father. She did. And I, I truly believe that she thought Francis was the birth father. Right. Um, I won't know otherwise because she'll never tell me. But and I and I do believe I uh, that there was the I mean, I know more about her history at that time and that they probably did have a very short term relationship and there was some discussion of marriage. Um, but yeah, this Francis was not the birth father. And so I did write him a letter and just say, what's the story? Just so you know, you're not the birth father. Um, but I never heard back from him. So <laughs> I won't, it's a story I won't ever get to know, I guess, but and it's kind of like, okay, courts, um, I have to have Francis write a letter, but I have DNA. Right. I mean, it's so outdated and archaic. Yeah. So I, um, I didn't. Yeah. They just said they'll redact that information. And when I got the, got the court files, um, the adoption agency files and everything, um, all names besides my birth parents or my, well, my birth mother and my mother and father, everything else was redacted. So it's like even family members that I grew up with, their names were redacted. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm pretty sure that they didn't give their permission to have their names listed in this document in the first place. Like, yeah, it was, it was frustrating. So I really hope that, you know, laws change, you know, it's, it's, well, I mean, there's everybody, a, yeah. you know, my, both of my birth parents welcomed me with open arms and, you know, I know that's not the case for everybody, but I do feel like 
um, you know, everyone should be able to have a say in this. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and so you're in New Hampshire now, you've moved closer. You're married. Are you married? Do you have kids? I am married. Um, been married for 22 years now. Wow. And yeah, uh, we weren't able to get pregnant, um, which was another kind of sad thing only because of that genetic connection that I yeah. so desperately craved. And mm-hmm. um, we went on to adopt our kids. Um, I was, you know, we were in our young thirties, so I was mindful as much as I knew at that time to do the research I wanted, you know, I was so frustrated by my experience. So I wanted, you know, to adopt from a program that was very transparent. Um, so we went with China and adopted our daughter. And then I'd say nine months after we brought her home, there was a big scandal in China about um, potential trafficking Mm. of kids for, you know, the, you know, the Westerners who come in with lots of money. Um, So I was like, oh, that just broke my heart that I was perpetuating this system of adoption that I myself hated. Um, So I um, speak to that in my book um, very openly and include an essay from my daughter um, about her feelings of adoption and um, more from a cultural perspective than anything. But um, I, uh, I think you know, I didn't have anything. So I gave them what I could, like it's everything that I knew about their history and photos. And um, my daughter has signed up also with like Ancestry and 23andMe. So should she ever, you know, want to do more research that's available to her. So I've tried to give her the things that I didn't necessarily have. Um, And then our son, uh, we adopted, uh, he has Uh, special needs so um his adoption was a little bit more straightforward um but yeah still yeah I feel for them like I feel for myself and my experience that um you know anyways that's I think because of your experience and you always wondered and you know that's a a healing thing from you for them Mm -hmm. I because most kids don't have that parent with that awareness yeah. And, how, and when they're old enough, I mean, you could travel to China and figure it out. And yeah, we've been, uh, Sounds like they're uh, yeah, yeah, my daughter and I have been to, uh, China twice and she's oh. gone with her school. So, um, you know, she's very connected as much as she can be as a Chinese American, um, to her identity that way. Um, so yeah, I was happy to be able to be in the position to provide those experiences for her. Oh, yeah. So what, um, what is the name of your book? So we can tell, tell, tell our listeners the name of your book and, um, we'll definitely put a link in the show. Yeah. Um, so it's called Storked. I I was like, (laughs) I never really intended to write a book about my story, but, um, it, so many people said that I should, and then it became uh, an exercise and, you know, therapy that I never received my whole life. So, um, but I love the title because that's really like, I came with nothing and I knew nothing. Um, so that's how the title, um, good title. Yeah. It came to be. And then I wrote it under my alias, Casey Sanford, K.C.Sanford. And I did that for several reasons. Um, One, it's to kind of protect, and I can't help. I mean, I'm an adoptee and I feel like I need to protect, you know, my birth parents and, you know, and the people who I write about, who I didn't tell I was writing about them. Um, So I, but also, you know, I never got to know who I was. So why do you get to know who I am right away? Um, there is kind of a, a surprise in my birth story. Um, 
that came to light after I connected with my birth father. I was quite surprised because it's never a story that I had heard of ever happening. Um, I'll chalk it up to the maybe sexual revolution of the late 60s, early 70s. Um, so, but also I wanted to um, really kind of lean into that little nine day section of my life that I didn't know about. And um, I was born, I was in the hospital for four, and this, this is all stuff I found out through my adoption records, which is why I wanted them really just to kind of figure out the, what happened in those nine days between when I was born and when I was adopted. And um, I was in the hospital for four days and then uh, in foster care. And my alias in foster care was Sherry Sanford. So mm -hmm. um, I wanted to kind of, you know, for the first time in life, my life, I kind of got to dictate this part of my story. So it was important for me to write under this particular name. So. Well, thank you so much for coming yes. on. And um, it's really great to hear this whole story and we yeah, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank it's been you. lovely to know you. It's I, I'm excited. I would like to, will you send us a copy? Oh yeah. I'll send you a signed copy. Okay. And then, actually, We're having yeah. a collection. <laughs> um, I, I've written a lot in my professional life as a technical writer. And so this kind of, um, leap into creative light writing was very new to me, but I was excited because it's actually won some awards. So, <laughs> so that's great. Well, that's great. One well, way to validate to a story, yeah, I guess. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much. This has yeah. been great. Thank you so, so much nice for having me on. You. I love you guys. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Bye. 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 Bye.